What's happening everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Jones Flight Academy. Today we're going to be talking about DJI's new feature which is called Terrain Following. Now when Terrain Following was first announced a few months ago, it got a lot of people excited, especially the surveyors and engineers out there, and rightfully so. Now Terrain Following is going to be able to take the survey projects to a new level and make them a lot more efficient. So if you're not too familiar with that, let me walk you through the process of how that works. Typically, maj the majority of all mapping software planners out there have, have had not ability to be able to alter the drone's height relative to the actual flatness of the terrain. So if the terrain goes down, that has been staying the same, and that changes what's called the ground sample distance. So now we're gonna be able to go ahead and have a very consistent ground sampling distance for our mapping projects. And that's going to allow us to be able to either eliminate ground control points or reduce the number of ground control points that we might have had to have because in high terrain changes of, of projects. So that's going to be really very helpful. Now, what most people don't understand, though, it is not a plug and play feature that you can just turn on in your app. It is a very complicated process to be able to go through. Now, once you be able to have that down packed, it is not too difficult of a process, but I would like to talk about what the process does include. Now, it has to be done through a third-party app, like DJI Terra, for example, but that's not free. Now, there are software applications out there that we use, like QGIS, and that is another way to be able to go ahead and get what's called a DSM. That DSM has to be pre-programmed and loaded into the smart controller and pre-programmed into the flight before we can actually use it. So it is an involved process. And we go through that whole process in our Matrice 300 online course that we have on our website and we really go through that. It's actually over an hour video just on how to create the digital model for this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through this process now of what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open up a mission plan, we're gonna show you how we actually applied the, D, the DSM to the flight and actually do the actual DSM and actually do a flight for you right now. So we're gonna go into mission flights, create a route, then hit mapping, then we're going to put our mapping area right over where we need it. Then we're going to hit terrain follow and turn that on. We're going to select our DSM model. I'm going to check that. Now it's activated. And now we're going to select our terrain follow height. So that means instead of it actually being the height over the takeoff point, now it's actually going to be the height of over the terrain. So then we're going to go create our flight, our flight plan. Once we have it all pre-programmed and ready to go, we're going to go hit play. We're going to upload the flight mission. We're going to hit start. And it's going to go to the first waypoint that I have pre-programmed. And once it gets to that first waypoint, it's going to go to that predetermined altitude that I set. And now, as you can see, it's slowly rising, 153 feet. So now we're at 177 feet, 180 feet, because the trees are at a higher altitude over that part of the terrain. And as it gets over the hillside, it's going to be going up. So that, that's the whole mission and that's how the terrain following feature works. Once we get the DSM in there and programmed, it's really easy to do, but it is a lot of process to be able to get that digital surface model in place. So if you want more information on that, please check out our online course. 
We offer a lot more. We show you step by step on how to be able to do that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Until next time, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon.